Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and listen to the story time which you can read from the title which is when I met Rihanna and called her a ratchet bitch. Now before you dislike this video, can you just bear in mind and no, can you can you remember the knowledge that I am a Rihanna stan? Like I stand this bitch for real. Like ever since I was 15, I dyed my hair red. The bitch that her hair red, I dyed my hair red. I was proper Rihanna Sam, Rihanna Navy. Rihanna old school navy thing. So if anyone tries to jump on me, listen, it was all through love, and I'll explain Harvard as we go on, but I'll give you a bit of background knowledge as to my love for Rihanna because I don't feel like this is emulated enough Rihanna is actually like a boss a queen like she is literally like one of my role models because bear in mind that this woman is really a working class Ethnic minority and she's a woman as well and also I don't know if you guys know but you know she had like Headaches and tablets and so she has like mental illnesses and she's really like overcome shit and I look at her She really is an immigrant doing the most Something that I aspire to be. And during year 10, I was really depressed, I was really upset. Um, and her music was like a source of fucking, like, ton upness. And ever since then, like, Rihanna has always been a big part of my life. And like, I love her. But, I'm not gonna lie. Back when I was younger, I was thinking, you know, Illuminati, Freemason. But then I guess I just like, I don't know, overcome that, overlook that. I don't really know. I don't even want to get into that. But anyways, this is the story of how I met Rihanna and called her a ratchet bitch self. So the story goes back to 2012, five years ago. Okay. So whoever knows me knows that I love Rihanna. Do I love Rihanna more than Beyonce? Yes. Do I think she's more talented than Beyonce? That will be, I have, I don't want to get hate, okay? Also, can you please like this video? Because I'm assuming everyone is just going to fucking hate me for this. But I love Rihanna and everyone knew that. And I had like t-shirts about her. I knew all her songs. Like my favorite album would probably be like Loud. Um, and she had the red hair type of shit. Because that for me was like the first album. I was like, get it, get it. What's My Name was my tune. The Vibes Cartel remix, if I had that, that is a banger. Obviously then her new album came out. Like I was just living for Rihanna. And so... When I finished my GCSEs, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Hackney Weekend. It was basically because the Olympics were happening in Hackney, they wanted to organise, like, I don't know, some justification, like raising money, raising promotion type of shit. So BBC got all of these like amazing talented artists to come to Hackney, and specifically Hackney Marshes. And there was a I think there was a Saturday and there was a Sunday. Saturday was Jay-Z headlining and a bunch of artists before him. Sunday was Rihanna. Obviously, I was going to go to Rihanna. And when I found out she was headlining, the tickets were basically free for Hackney citizens. Some of us. Some of us were free for Hackney citizens. And I tried to log in and I spent so many hours like trying to do it. And then when I had to enter my car details, I didn't know what... I think it was called CVV or something like that. Like the free letters of the card. I didn't know what that meant. I cried. I was like, that's it. I don't know what this means. Like, the tickets are all going to go. My mum is out. So I can't ask her. And it's selling out quick. And I literally cried. Um, but then I got it. And then I realised that it's the fucking free at the back. So I got my ticket for Hackney Weekend for Sunday. And I got there. I went with two friends um, from Singles School. I don't really talk to them now. But two friends. And we got there for 4 a.m. Hackney Marshes. Yeah? 4 a.m. Okay. 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 Bear in mind that I had a chemistry exam the day after for GCSE and yes you best believe I wrote Rihanna in one of the answers this is why I actually need help but anyway so I go to Hackney Weekend Hackney Marshes 4am with these two people we queue for about an hour and a half I think I actually can't remember like maybe even two hours then 7am or whatever time they let us in we're obviously at the front of the queue we're running 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 and it's Hackney Marshes and there was a bit of rain I slip on mud so I'm a bit pissed off. But anyways, I scrape the mud off somehow and I go to the um, to the main arena where Rihanna's gonna perform later on that night. I was front row, yeah? I was front row. And then like, I did not, I had a bit of water and I had like a couple of chips, three, four, like literally four individual chips and that was it. That was the only thing I had that day. I waited for Rihanna from 4 a.m till 8 p.m. when she was headlining, but because it's Rihanna and she's late, love you, but come on, get a fucking clock. At <laughs> uh, 9 p.m., 
I waited for her and she came on and she headlined and it actually banged like it was amazing. The first time I saw her live and like it was just turn up. So Rihanna's doing her little her little like set and she's like Hackney made some noise. Jay-Z was saying London. Everyone was saying London. Ha Rihanna was saying Hackney. I was like, bitch, she's saying my ends like turn the fuck up. Hackney made some noise. I'm like, yeah, ba 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 ba. And then what I see is when they put her stage up, the bouncer or I don't know, the type of stage event people, they're making some sort of like um some stage at the front. So basically she's here, yeah. And the barriers are here. And then we're all here. So there's a massive gap. Then they come and they build some sort of ramp thing. She's coming to the audience. She's coming to high five us. I'm going to touch her. Okay, I don't care where. I don't care even if it's her weep. I don't care if it's her spit. I don't care even if it is her atmosphere of gravity salt. The fuck? I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch Rihanna. Like, I need to just touch her. So, she does her little set, and I see her getting ready. Everyone's like, wah, 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 wah. She walks, 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 walks. And what song is it? Cake, 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 cake. So she's doing her little cake, cake, cake song. And you know the run where Chris Brown has a, has a verse? Obviously, I know every single Rihanna song. So, she comes around, and it's Chris Brown's verse, and it's, um... Oh, I just can't remember what. Oh, fuck, I'm actually a fraud star. She's walking, walking past, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And I'm like trying to reach out to touch her. And I was singing the Chris Brown verse. What happens? She gives me the mic. Rihanna gave me the mic. This was the mic, okay? It was black and it had a gold the Mikey point, I don't know what it's called, the microphone cage thing, whatever, I don't know, blood clot. And I grabbed it. Now, listen, when I dance, or when I like vibe, I go back, I'm a bit like space, a, a, a type of person. So when she gave me the mic, I went back and I was doing my little vibey thing here, yeah? These times, security is coming to kill me. They really have come to grab me by my hair, which by the way, was like a similar color to this, and chuck me to Islamabad. The fuck, bitch? So I was really like, okay, um, this is where I die for Rihanna. And then the people in the audience come forward, right? Because they're like, I'm going to This is someone's camera. They put it like that. And I'm really am behind. And I'm looking at her doing a little thing like, hey, hey. And if you want to watch this, there's actually a video. Go to, I don't know, this link, ding. And go to this second, ding. And you'll see me. Um, but you have to, <laughs> you have, it'll be really hilarious. So I'm doing my little thing to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um... I forgot the lyrics. <laughs> it was a really hard song. It was a really, really hard song and a hard lyric to remember and verse and shit. So I forgot the lyrics, so I gave it back to her. But obviously I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, look, like this Ariana. She's there, she wore like some tiger print t-shirt. She had some long ass fucking 50 inch weave doing her little ting ting. And I see her green eyes, that bitch has green eyes. I kind of thought she had a lazy eye, but she, I think she was high, <laughs> to be honest with you, and like just, drunk and shit but the bitch was turned up as fuck so she's doing her little thing i'm like yes bitch i give her the mic and then what happens i cry straight away when she walks away and you'll see it you'll see it in the video i'm just like la, 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 la. and like that was literally that was the best moment or one of the best moments of my life because it was so spontaneous imagine that you go see your fave you give forever and they give you the mic just you this is why I love the bitch, yeah? Now, technically, this isn't the story, but this is, like, part of the story. So, this is part one of my relationship with Rihanna. She gave me the mic, and I fucking love her, and I loved it, and it was just amazing. And, like, when I went to school the next day, I was so glad. I was like, hey, you met Rihanna, you met Rihanna. People were touching me because I touched Rihanna. These times, you were bullying me two weeks ago, so bye, bitch, you're Felicia. So, anyways, school then finishes, um, and I failed my chemistry exam because I wrote Rihanna because did I even know what chemistry was? Bye. So, after the summer of, like, GCSEs, then we had sixth form. Now, I don't know if you guys know too much about me, but basically, when I did my A-levels, the first attempt, I stayed on at the sixth form. I then dropped down and thought, fuck, this is shit. But I went to that sixth form. And so, obviously, people still knew of me, and I think people, I think that kind of got me my, my 10 seconds of fame in that school. And then, one of the girls in, like, I think year 11 or year 10, was a massive Rihanna fan as well. And we would literally, like, talk about her now and then. Like, it was kind of cute. Like, I really would, I really did have, like, a Rihanna fan page. Like, I had that on Instagram. Then I deleted it, like, after, like, two days. And I used it to stalk people, but anyways. So, guys, I really am, like, I stand for Rihanna. And so, someone, um, let's call them Curtain. Because my curtains are looking time up this freaking this freaking year. So myself and Curtin would talk beer about like how much we love Rihanna and shit and like it would actually be like some type of conversations we listen to her music and shit. And then what happened was that Christmas, cause again it was like the Olympics, the Olympics just finished, 
I'm assuming we had a bit of money, like East London. So then Stratford, West Hill, Stratford was created. This is 2012, by the way. This is five years ago. So Stratford are... That's a Stratfield. So Stratford are creating Westfield in Stratford and they want someone to put the Christmas lights on. Who do they bring? Rihanna. Yeah, and this is now Rihanna has light shine, right? Like a diamond type of thing. And so Rihanna's come to put the lights on. They announced that they're doing like some sort of meet and greet type of thing and you need to apply. So I applied and I didn't get in, but Curtin applied and she applied so many times. And she got in. So she got a ticket for herself and a friend, right? She then asked me, she was like, Ibs, you're the only other person who loves Rihanna as much as me. Like, let's go together. And I was like, okay, like, wow, like, this is literally like the thank you so much. This is amazing. Like, literally, how can I ever repay you? Like, I actually, I'm gonna do meet you. I'm not just have the mic, I'm gonna meet and talk to her. Like, I'm actually gassed. Now, the thing is, you had to be 18, and I was 17. So I did fake ID. Don't ask me how, don't ask me, don't even ask me about that. But I got fake ID. Um, and we went. We went and I wore the same clothes that I went to see her at the weekend. Obviously me thinking like, you know, fake, fake. So I wore a pink cardigan and a pink shirt. When I went to see her in Hackney weekend, I didn't have the shirt. Obviously, I just had the pink cardigan. And also, please don't judge me by the way I looked, okay? I had really bad friends, as you've seen. And they did not tell me to fix up like I actually look like a mess I really do feel like I've, I hope I've grown up a bit now side note I didn't know if she was gonna take me or not so Rihanna was coming to Stratfield on November the 24th okay and you could see her if you got wristbands so you would have to go to Stratford in the morning to get wristbands then you come back to see her perform the wristbands were blue so I went with my friend Maya shout out to you I went with her to um Stratford to get the wristbands I also went to the HMV and I was the first person to buy Unapologetic the album I was the first one in Stratford to buy her album because I don't know where people were, they were sleeping and shit. So I go looking like Krusty the Clown meets Apu from The Simpsons. And we go to Stratford. Stratford. Westfield. We go there, we turn up, and then we get like to the part where we have to sign in to get the tickets, the meet and greet. And we didn't have blue wristbands, we had gold. Okay? Gold. And we were walking around Westfield and Stratford, and someone was like to us, oh, you got gold tickets, how did you get gold tickets? And we're like, we're going to see Rihanna. And they're like, oh, I hate you, I hate you. Like, it was actually, it was actually amazing. And I was literally like, oh my God, Lord. I really was praying. I was like, God, if you actually do this for me, I would do the most. Um, If you let my fake ID go through. And it went through. So I was gassed. And so the way the Westfield stage was, is Rihanna's performance was here. Her stage was here. Then you had a crowd of audience here. And then you had another audience here, which was like the VIP. This was gold tickets, people who want to meet and greet. And also people, if they wanted to see, because they were also doing some performance, like some choir shit. So like family from the choir could go to the front as well. They were completely irrelevant to be honest. Who's coming for choir? We're coming for Rihanna. Bye bye, man, with your silent night. Bye. Anyways, we go to the front and I'm gassed. And I don't really have pictures of that because I had BB these times. My battery was always low and I was poor and I never really used to be able to like pay for insurance to fix my phone. My phone was damaged. But anyways, we're in the queue. We're waiting to see Rihanna. How late is she? I really do feel like she lives on another planet and her time is like 24 hours another day. The bitch was about three to four hours late. And everyone's like, Come on, come on, Rihanna, come on. And it was even raining, and the people had to have them poncho paper things. I was like, Rihanna. But anyways, the bitch came, okay? And it was lit as hell. She came, she sang, shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. And then she pressed the button, fireworks come, bummer clock, which I never got to see because I was at the front. And then we go to the meet and greet type of thing. So we go in the queue. Now, if you know Rihanna, you'll get gas at this. But when we're in the queue, in some long ass queue, waiting to meet her on stage, and um, Leandra was there. If you don't know Leandra, she's like one of Rihanna's squad. And also someone called Melissa. So Melissa's also Rihanna's squad, and they were there. Now, I knew of Melissa, I didn't know of Leandra, but. Curtin knew, because Curtin actually stand around more than me. You know, Curtin was someone who actually would go to the hotels and give gifts and stuff like that. I think that's really awesome and cool. I would never do that. I would never go to a celebrity, like, find them and be like, here's a gift. I would never wait inside the cold for any... I wouldn't even wait for, like, my mum or my dad if they were doing shopping and I had to help them. I'd be like, hello, Uber. I'm really... I'm not going to be waiting in the cold for anyone. But that's how much Curtin stand around. And I love them for that. And they're actually a really amazing person. I'm not throwing no shade. But you'll see, you'll see. So anyways, we're in the queue and then Curtin notices Deandra and Melissa, but doesn't say anything. 
I was like, come on, girl, be loud. Like, we're here. I was like, Leandra. She's like, hey. Like, she was talking to me. We even took a selfie. Um, and I really wish I could get hold of that. But how the hell do you do contact celebrities? So now it's our turn to go on stage. So we went in a group of four. It was me, Kat, and those two other boys that came in with us. But they were so irrelevant. Like, I don't know. They're not even relevant. So let's just call them Oxford Exeter because, bye. They were white male. Uh -huh, indirect. But anyway, so we all go on stage. And they're shook. And they're free. So Kat and o Oxford and Exeter. I'm like... Can we run on stage, please? I'm back, bye, man. I'm, I'm like, Rihanna, bitch. She's like, oi. She hugs me, and we're just like, I'm just like, bitch, I love you type of shit. Let me go, we take a photo, and then everyone's like, the cameraman's like, come on, next, next. Excuse me, next. When am I ever gonna see my role model again? Please, skirt, skirt, bye bye, bitch, back to your lane. So I don't care. I was holding her. I was like, I'm fucking love you, bitch. Like, you're the fucking baddest, bitch, blah, blah, blah. And she smiled. She's like, oh, you're so cute. And I was like, bitch, you are ratchet, bitch. Now, I really did think that ratchet was a positive adverb, adjective. I thought it was a positive word. Um, because I remember her like in a video saying like ratchet, ratchet, like it's a positive thing. So I called her a ratchet bitch. And when I tell you her face was like, <laughs> eh? Like that is what happened. But I didn't, I was this was oblivious. And then like, she was like, okay, okay. And I think she was still like sort of vibing off me and I loved it. And everyone, when I was, when I was proper gassing, I ran, I love you, we were on stage. So the whole crowd of like, I don't know how many thousands of people were screaming. Cause I was the only, like not the only fun one, but like everyone's walking up, like kiss my baby, kiss this, like can I have it all up? Bitch, I want you to turn up with me. I want you to have a little, yeah, yes, bitch, yes, turn up moment. And I had that. And then obviously I was like, Rana, I love you, wretched bitch. Like, cool, 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 cool. Her face dropped like, is this fucking boy with glasses? This Asian boy, this Indian boy, like, okay, crazy. Also, it's on her 777 uh, DVD tour. A friend told me, and I was like, it's not on there. Then I watched it like a couple of months ago because I was a bit upset about being in Cambridge. And then I saw um the video and I'm on there. And I'm actually so ugly. But anyways, anyways, so uh, we got off stage and I was gassed for my life. I was like, hey, and then they gave us three albums. I'm like, you know, I just bought an album of 11.99. Can I please have my refund, please? But anyways, we go off the stage. They were playing her album, they're playing, pull it up, pull it up, watch it up, power up. And I listened to the album in the morning. So everyone doesn't know the song. I know the song. I was gassed. And then when we left, like some of my friends from that school were in the big crowd. So when they ran into me, they're like, hey, but my God, I it. Like it was literally like such a gas, like a proper hackney moment. Like I was just, it was just amazing. And then. This is the picture, by the way. I'll show you it now. After this picture that we took, um, when it came out the next day, I go to school and the picture's everywhere. Everyone's like, I'm going to meet Rihanna like right to that. It's like my 15 minutes of fame have come back because of Rihanna. So everyone was like, turn up, turn up, turn up. It was actually live as fuck. And then I messaged Curtin like, oh, hey, do you remember the name of the girl that we said hello to that took a selfie with us, Leandra? Because I was like, maybe we can contact her where we can get the selfie. And then Curtin was like, how do you not even know the name? You're such a bad fan. Where's my... Excuse me? Excuse me? A bad fan? When Rihanna comes on stage, am I there like Silent McGee? Am I gonna be all doing the mannequin? No. If my room, I'm gonna scream and be like, I don't care about the other assistants. Or whatever. Like, obviously, I love the men's shit, but if I want to see around, I'm not a bad fan. And I was just like, the fuck? And basically, they were really upset because they thought that I took their time from Rihanna. I wasn't the main person that got the ticket. I was sort of the guest. But, like, I was still living for it. So, I kind of felt bad. But then I thought, hang on a minute. Like, it's not my fault you're quiet. You really should have gotten some two seconds of extrovertness because it's your role model. Like, I get, I do get it. Like, and even when people meet me, I'm not saying I'm I'm not on anyone's level at all. Like, I'm literally just some boy who's a tramp. But when I meet fans or when I meet subscribers, like, I get that some of you are shy. But then you guys liven up very, very quickly. Every single person I've spoken to. And I feel like you're really gonna... This isn't like some minor person. This is Rihanna, big, big Rihanna. And I imagine she's even bigger now, but this is 2012 Rihanna. Like, she was important. You're just gonna stand there. And you're gonna try and come for me because you didn't want to. I'm thinking the first time. I was like, can you just give me the name? They didn't want to give me the name. I was like, okay, skirt. Then, originally, they didn't even want to give me the photo. They were so long to give me the photo. But then I sort of forced them out. I got the photo. 
Then they deleted me off everything. I was just like, okay, that bitch back. Yeah, I'm not like throwing shade, like the young. So meeting Rihanna really did cause like some drama for me because I'm losing friends over this shit, but it was worth it. I don't give a fuck. Rihanna literally just made my whole year. I sang with Rihanna. That's what I say. I had that mic with Rihanna. And I actually met Rihanna in 2012 in the space of a couple months. Like, it actually banged. And in terms of calling Rihanna like a ratchet bitch, I went to my school the next day and they're like, oh, what did you say? And I was like, Rihanna, yeah, yeah. It was guys. I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I called her a ratchet bitch, yeah, yeah. My friends are looking at me like, eh? Hey? Are you okay to call her a ratchet bitch? I was like, yeah, yeah, it means it's good, isn't it? Like, brother, it means that like, you're fun, you're turn up. They're like, it means disgustingly ghetto. So, I obviously, I'm not close to Rihanna anymore. And I feel like I will never meet her again. But in that moment of time, I thought it was all positive, positive, and... Yeah, so, yeah. One thing I will say is that, you know, like, don't meet your role model type of thing? When I met Rihanna, when I sang with her, let me just give me the mic, I didn't really feel the need to ever, I didn't really feel the need to see her again type of thing. Like, oh, is she going to come to this concert? Do you want to come in? I was like, I've met her. I've touched her. She's hugged me. And she gave me the mic. I've made it. I really have made it. And you know, I already was like, in my Twitter bio, Rihanna gave me the mic 24th of, um... June 2012. Another thing is that I really do feel like Rihanna really is like a good role model for me. And even like with her makeup line, yeah, it really is what I'm trying to do. But obviously like with ed education in some aspect, I'm not trying to exclude people. I'm trying to accommodate to others. Rihanna didn't just do a black or like a dark skin range. She did extremely light skin, dark skin, and also in the middle. In the idea that she really did bring them her seasoning. That's right. She did him small. No, no, she did not. She did not. No, I copied her. I'm obsessed. I love her. Right now, I love you. Please don't. Anyways, guys, that is it for me today. That is it for my story time. I don't know if it was a bit boring. I'm sorry if it is, but school has started. Can you see my Wagwan calendar? I'll explain that all of you in another video. But things have been so, so busy. And I really feel like I had to tell you this because I just really wanted to tell you guys from, like, day one about meeting Rihanna. So, bye. Make sure you watch the video. And, again, the pictures on my Instagram if you want to stalk that. You might as well watch my Twitter and my Snapchat. Oh, look at me doing the most. Please leave a like. Please comment. Comment your favorite Rihanna song, your favorite Rihanna album, your favorite Rihanna moment. Let's just have an appreciation of Rihanna. Okay? I love you guys. Mwah. What is my favorite Rihanna song? Um, It's obviously work. Remember my work analogy that I did with Courtney? Work, 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 which basically is about the empowerment and overcoming obstacles to bring them your seizing and the idea that you really can accomplish goals and you can achieve well if you try your hardest against white supremacy. That's what work, 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 work means. Well, you think it was just some sort of, that's that bitch, bye.